welcome everybody. Um, today we're going to talk about general principles of cost estimation. I'm going to try to just, uh, go through maybe the, I think it's the three or four types of, of estimation. I'm not going to uh, push uh, any type of uh, cost estimation model, but really encourage everybody to, to think about models, maybe think about them more smartly, or when they're doing estimates, things to consider. My background is um, I got training um, uh, in graduate school uh, under a person named Barry Bain who created the Kokomo model, and I helped him create the second Kokomo model, and in doing that uh, help, uh, write, writing model definitions and collecting data and calibration, I learned a lot about general, uh, cost estimation uh, in, in general. So I want to share some of those uh, things that I learned with you guys this morning. Hopefully you'll find it beneficial. So our objectives today uh, discuss four approaches to software project cost estimation. Uh, and then I've come up with you know, 10 principles of cost estimation. We'll talk about those. Discuss the approaches to sizing the work to be done. This is probably the most challenging thing you do whenever you do a software cost estimate. I explain the impact of compressing a project schedule. Uh, that's often something that people do but don't understand the impact of doing that kind of thing. In other words, getting, having a shorter timeline in which to do work and, and what impact does that have on your staffing. And discuss analyzing the feasibility of the estimation approaches. So after an estimate is done, how do you uh, look at that and critique it? Or if you get an estimate from somebody else and you want to uh, critique it or uh, analyze it or, or just see if it's feasible, what, you know, what do you do about that? All right, so that's uh, our objectives. <clears throat> so as background, let me just uh, give you kind of a, a way that uh, I think about uh, estimation. And I should <clears throat> maybe I should mention right now, um, there are lots of ways to do uh, estimations of cost. The probably the most common way is to use a work breakdown structure and populate that with uh, tasks, and then uh, load those tasks up with uh, duration, the, the, the amount of time it will take to do tasks in calendar days, and then also resources, the number of hours of, of people working on that task, and then to roll that up to a high level, and you come up with a uh, amount of effort, and many ABS tools or project planning tools will let you also put in a labor rate, come up with a cost and effort and a schedule. The this method is a different way, is, is a different approach. This is taking something uh, uh, that you might call uh, uh, an amount of work, a, a quantity of work, and then uh, trying to estimate what the effort and schedule will be. This is a great second uh, or first way to think about how to estimate cost and then compare that to a rolled up uh, estimate, such as a WBS uh, roll up of estimate. So. Um, there's a couple of ways to think about work, work to be done. One is a to uh, try to express it functionally. You might um, work, work specs often have specifications about functionality. Uh, they have specifications about performance. The amount of quality uh, is sometimes there, sometimes it's assumed to be. It's got to be good enough to, to operate in a certain environment, and there's an environment that has to be work, worked in. These are all specs that we'll talk about the amount of work to be done. And then from that, uh, estimators try to create a size of that work. And that work might be broken up into chunks, like various builds and deliveries. But in sizing the work uh, for a chunk of it to be developed, uh, you can use something, a functional measure called uh, uh, function points. There's actually an international uh, group that, or in international uh, function point users group that actually try, that maintains counting practices. There's other kinds of function points out there. There's actually an uh, ISO standard on function points. There's uh, use case points, which is uh, uh, evolved with the advent of uh, unified modeling language. Story points, number requirements that some people have done, and then we can, uh, there's design cases, there's uh, uh, different, different things you can count, but then finally get down to the product measure, which is uh, not a functional measure, but more of a physical measure of the product, source lines of code. Uh, so there's varying things in between. The important point is that you are able to measure the, um, you're able to measure the product with some consistently applied counting technique, and then you get a size. Now, uh, with this size, what we try to do then is uh, say, okay, if I have 100 of these things, then how often or, or how fast can I uh, produce these things? How, much, how many people does it take to actually implement these 100 things? Uh, I'll call them 100 widgets, okay, instead of function points or source lines of code. 
uh, what's my productivity uh, per widget, those kinds of things. And from the, the size, we derive a, an effort number, which can be expressed in labor hours, staff weeks, person months, per, uh, man years, depending upon um, your conversion or your productivity numbers. And then from effort, depending upon how many people are available, uh, you can derive schedule, which is uh, usually expressed in months or, to, or milestones. And the important thing about uh, effort is um, you, you need to understand what the units are when you, when you do your size estimation. So for uh, parametric models, uh, you may get effort in different units than you're used to. Uh, and the other, the other point about effort is that if the effort is fixed, let's say there's 10 people on the project, that's all there is, and this pretty much size goes right through effort into schedule, and schedule varies according to size. Now you see a little feedback loop uh, from <clears throat> schedule back to effort, and um, that's because if you compress uh, effort, <clears throat> if you compress the effort, or I'm sorry, if you compress the schedule, then it's going to take more people to actually do the effort. Um, <clears throat> so that's a consideration, and that compression is best taken care of in models. We'll talk about that in a little bit uh, about <clears throat> the impact. But just I just want you to be aware that whenever you shorten the time frame, you're going to have to work longer hours. You're going to have to have more people. All right, let's go to the next slide here. All right, so first we'll break this uh, presentation into uh, three parts. We'll talk about the four estimation approaches and the uh, ten principles and then the feasibility analysis that I mentioned earlier. Brad, I just want to mention I, don't, I still see you on slide six. Okay, I'm on slide nine. See, that was slide uh, eight. How about slide, I'm now I'm looking at slide nine. Is everybody at slide nine, do you know? No, we are on slide six. Um, here. Can you, um, can you manage the slides then? Sure. All right. Go ahead, Brett. All right, uh, are we on slide seven now? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, everyone. Slide seven uh, talked about size, effort, and schedule in product specs, and this is the basic relationship between them. Uh, we use we, we take a product spec or a, a statement of requirements and and uh, quantify them as a size using different counting techniques. And as I, uh, I mentioned, they need to be consistently applied those counting techniques uh, because when you collect data to calibrate your model or to develop your estimation um, methodology, you want to use the same techniques. Um, to predict as you did to collect data. From size, we get effort through a conversion of pro using productivity, number of widgets per um, hour or per month, per person month, person hour. And then from effort, that met, met effort using the expression of uh, people and, and time, we can derive um, the schedule. And if we compress the schedule, then there's a feedback into effort that makes the effort um, more it, it, just, it either takes longer hours. I mean, you either work overtime the weekends or you hire more people if you're going to make the schedule shorter. Probably a lot of people have experienced that kind of um, schedule compression. All right, let's go to slide uh, eight. For the, the presentation is broken into three parts, and uh, I've already mentioned these before, so let's go to nine. All right, the, the four approaches uh, talk about our expert judgment, probably the most popular uh, method of estimating, es uh, estimation by analogy, using something else that's happened before, and then uh, applying that to the current situation. Simple estimating relationships, uh, which is the productivity numbers I just mentioned before, and the parametric model, which is a little more sophisticated, just taking in account more things that can vary between projects. Um, but basically, it's an estimating relationship with more parameters. Let's go to slide 10. All right, expert judgment, uh, you, you may have heard uh, expert judgment referred to in many, many things, uh, many, many ways. Uh, engineering judgment is uh, probably the most popular.